frequency graphs. And, you know, don't put too much into it or whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, you're talking about over thousand dollar sets, man. Don't put too much into it. Are you nuts? That's people's money. Just a little friendly reminder to my viewers out there. Frequency graphs don't lie. People lie. People embellish. People whitewash. People avoid, dance around. Graphs don't. There's some people out there that mine are reasonably decent. Critical does very good ones, probably the best in the business. And there's maybe a few others. Interpretation of those graphs is there's a little bit of room for you based on personal taste, but there's not a lot of room for what parts of the frequency are going to emphasize guitar and vocals, kick drums, etc. That's just that's what an amplitude scale is supposed to do. It's it's not rocket science. It's acoustic science. That's the way it is. It's not voodoo. It's not like cables. It's not like burn in. It's not if you raise a certain frequency you're going to enhance certain things that's the way it is the recording industry and certain sites have scales that explain to you where instruments start and end and give you rough estimates that if you cut or you raise this certain frequency you're going to probably get this certain kind of a uh, effect that's real I had a moment where I kind of said, okay, graphs are having too much influence on this. And right in the middle of that moment, I grabbed a set without looking at a graph because I thought I was going to do something. I don't know what I thought I was going to do, but I spent $2,800 actually. $2,800 on a set that really didn't have any bass. That didn't really sound good either. And then I checked the graph and there was one up by, you know who, Critical had one up looked like what I was listening to and I had seen one other YouTuber's recent video calling it a dreamy set. I don't... for treble lovers maybe. Not for anybody that likes the sound, the feel of a kick drum. Especially that's a dynamic driver. That's a dynamic driver right there. It's not like four BAs in the bottom or two BAs. That's a dynamic driver. I spent and wasted money because I didn't look at all the information that was available to me. That's my fault. That's why I didn't get all upset about that really. I guess I'm kind of getting upset by bringing it up, but it's a good example. At that moment when I said, you know what? I'm going to move away from, I don't know, common sense and I'm going to buy something. Right in that gap, I made a big expensive mistake. I won't do that again. When I get stuff from companies, one of the first things I do, I stop for about two weeks, but I'll never do that again. Graph it. Because that is going to be what determines whether something has a long life or no life. Because many people look at a frequency graph for good and for bad and say, that's not my thing. And you think, oh, well, you, these are for music. Listen to music. I, As much as anybody on YouTube, I put my music in front of you. I use my music to explain exactly what I'm hearing. Time stamped, you know minute 27 to minute 31 left channel b time t timestamp two bass line bass guitarist coming in on steely dan hey 19 like I i'll give you exact things and nobody really checks them people say why does he even do that well, because people actually do check it and some people do actually purchase stuff based on my recommendation because i say specific stuff and their library is similar to mine or they don't have the same taste to me but they can use my information because they're clever they can extrapolate info. It doesn't matter that they agree with me. Do not listen to people that tell you frequency graphs. Mm, don't pay too much attention to them. There are sellers and then there are companies. And when a company sells something and you are given something directly from them, it it's a different animal than when a seller sends something. I've said this to you guys before. If a seller sends something, you can say, I really, you know what? This is going to be a problem. There's The mids are so scooped, it's probably not going to do very well. And the seller will understand that. And they'll either pull it back and they'll retune it, not sell it, stock less of it, make a smaller contract of purchase so that they don't lose and get stuck with stuff that they got to sell on some someplace. Because that's the power of frequency graphs. Because that will tell you if the vocals are far away or if the kick drum is going to dominate everything or if guitar solos and vocals are going to overwhelm the bass 
all of that stuff can be gleaned from frequency graphs. So don't be stupid. If you're investing money, if you if you're spending money in the budget arena, having stuff of different try and find out what you like. What you like is not going to be determined by a graph. What a uh, earphone sounds like is really going to be indicated by the frequency graph. You like that or not is your personal thing. But that that frequency graph unless it's done by a total moron and doesn't match any other graphs, that's a very good indication of what you're going to be presented with. And make note of it because you can save yourself money in the future and not I, I would not have bought this if I had looked at the graph. One of the few times that I don't do that, it bit me right in the ass. Very expensive. I lost a lot of money on this set. A lot. That's why I didn't do the final review. I had to send it back immediately. E earphone, they holy crap. So I just was on HeadFi watching and I saw people talking about another set flagship and they were talking about frequency graphs and, you know don't put too much into it or whoa 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 you're talking about over thousand dollars sets man don't put too much into it are you nuts that's people's money get a hold of yourself man that's that's as close to science as we've got in this hobby don't be telling people to don't think about that too much no, you better think about it a lot. You better pay attention to every set that you've got that you like and try to find a reliable graph on that because that is likely generally what you prefer. And if you've got something in your possession that you don't like, find a good graph for that because that's probably an indication of what you don't like. A certain scoop, a certain spike, everybody's hearing is slightly different. What does not work for you? Figure that out. And then the rest of it, play around and enjoy the variety of life but don't ignore the information right in front of you do not listen to people on forums that are typing in public saying stuff like oh that you know people put too much into graphs are you are you out of your fucking mind are you out of your mind do you know what you're talking about you're talking about little teeny speakers that go in your ear to play back music over a thousand dollars like this that's almost three grand you better pay attention to graphs Take it from somebody who knows. I just ate a bunch of money. I've got a lot of money, but I don't want to waste it because then I won't have a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? So graphs. Yeah, quite important. Heaven and hell. I guess it depends on who you are. If it's a company, mm, it could be both. Depends on how good a job you did. And I don't have any sympathy for companies because if they pay attention, that's why everything was Harmon, Harmon, Harmon. Someone said, you can't spit without hitting three Harmon tune sets. I think that was on another form. And I thought, that's brilliant. That's true. I don't want to have the same tune thing again and again and again, but like 2700 for no bass. Dreamy. What kind of fucking dreams do you have? That's nightmare. Nightmare. There's nothing dreamy about that. Nightmare. That's my nightmare. I'm making words. Holy crap. I'm out. Frequency graphs. Pay attention. Pay attention to them and what they say in general. More attention paid to what you like and don't like and make note, like I said. That's where the value is. It's a personal thing. It's not that this graph says that this is good or bad. This, this graph says, how do you interpret it? What's your experience? Do you have a little bit of hearing loss and the trouble and you, you know emphasize trouble is not a problem for you well the good then you you know that when you're going in and you're looking for something if someone else says oh it's too much trouble you might be thinking like that'd be perfect for me i don't need to turn the volume up and i can still get graphs the don't determine good or bad generally besides scooped mids mm, super bright treble mm, massive bass or rolled off sub bass there's certain things that are generally unappealing to most all people everything else is the rainbow of the hobby enjoy it don't don't let other people tell you not to use the tools available to you and take them seriously and i'm out that was easy